Mango back with another podcast. We have a special guest today, and it is the one, the only Princeton. Prince. What up? What up? How you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing better than yesterday. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so basically, you are you are a man of many talents: a songwriter, dancer, TV show actor. A little bit of everything. Really, I'm focused on music right now. I'm, I haven't even dabbed in fully into acting, but that's like my second passion. And fashion, fashion. Even though I'm in gym clothes right now, fashion is. But like you've my, been in you've been in some shows too. Yeah. What shows, up, what shows you been in? Well, before my acting used to come from like I used to be in like McDonald commercials, Gap commercials, right. Sketcher <laughs> commercials. Like I, really, I was like five really? years old, really trying to get a bag. Wait, really? Five years old? Yeah. You started. At, doing that at five years old yeah wait so how, did your parents get you into that no i wanted to do this it was just my mom my mom was like whatever you want to do we can do it i just wanted to be on tv wow so that's what i so wanted. so what was your what was your main interest uh your whole life though what was your main focus it was probably d- dancing dancing yeah you're a good dancer i could i have some rhythm oh okay <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how you got into music and and um you were in a in a boy group and yeah. the boy group was um mind's behavior yeah and had, tell me a little bit about that and like what happened yeah i joined the group when i was 10 years old i auditioned because at first i thought it was a dance crew but it turns out they're just making a you know like the next version of like b2k basically because mm-hmm. they had b2k and they yeah. didn't really have an urban band out at the time so it was called mindless behavior i joined the group and we did our thing. I was kind of in three different versions of Mindless Behavior too. Like the first version and then the group members left. Second version, which was like the biggest one. Then the group members left and then the third version. But um, yeah, after that, I just kind of took some time to find myself. Wait, when when was that? When, when did that all happen? That was in I'm like I'm 26. So that's like from 2010 to 2020 is like the time slot. Oh, so you were in the in the group for 10 years. Yeah, 10 years of my life. Wow. Yeah. And do you think that benefited you at all? Yeah, definitely. I mean, what, I got blessed. What, what came out of it? What came out of it was experience. You know, I feel like I'm only 26 now, and this is usually the age that you look like start. you're 15. Thanks. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> A lot of people tell me that I look like I'm 14. 12 year old and sexy. Yeah. Ew. Oh no, no. <laughs> That's what I said. It, it didn't come yeah. off the same way. Um, it gave me experience because, like, I'm at the age now that people usually start their career yeah so i have a lot of experience but you know i'm just getting over that 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 huddle of boy band to solo artists so I'm yeah. Just, yeah is that is that difficult for you it is difficult for me yeah because part of it people are always gonna think you're 15 yeah but then also part of it is me you know i don't want to fail i don't want to disappoint my fans i don't want to disappoint myself so it's it's just taking a leap, a leap of faith yeah man how does your fans react to all that when 10 years in a band in, the, in a boy band yeah and you you went on tours obviously right yeah that's all we did was tour yeah and that dude that's crazy and then now you're trying to do something solo so how did yeah. your fans react to when they found out that oh i'm peacing out well the group kind of just fizzled out it wasn't no bad breakup it wasn't no yeah no, yeah so that's like the blessing in that but I, they were pretty excited. I was really hesitant because the music is R and B and Latin, and I knew they loved R and B, but I didn't know if they were gonna fuck with like the Latin music. But so far, the little snippets that I'm giving them, they they pretty much fuck with it. So, yeah. so, so did they they gave you a good response? They gave me a good response. Now it's just on me on when I want to put it out, which is, you know, I'm just, when is that? How will you tell the audience? Huh? Hopefully, like within this month. This month? Yeah, this month or next month. Like, oh, that's within, exciting! Within like thirty days. How long have you been like, working on it? Like two years since since two the pandemic, years. yeah. I've shot videos, I've shot everything. It's all done. It's just on me now when I want to put it out. So I know a lot of artists. Uh, they they um, they put in their songs uh, things about their life, like what yeah. they go through. So, um, what are you mostly writing about? Well, I, the whole project was made during the pandemic, and I love performing. Out of being an artist, my favorite part is being on stage. So we weren't out the house we were stuck in the studio so i just made music that i wanted to perform because i just couldn't wait to hit the stage so the music is fun great beats lyrics are not that hard to really dive into and really understand it's about if you're going through heartbreak if you're having a good time it's like you can cry and have you you gone through heartbreak hell yeah (laughs) that's the biggest thing that's happened that's happened to me since 
it's like these past <laughs> this past year is just heartbreak it's Heartbreak after heartbreak, and so is that. Is that where a lot of your songs they are like no. talking about heartbreak? No, no, or no. Because no? I, I recorded the whole project before I got my heart broken, so now I guess I have to go back in the studio and. Yeah, you definitely have to. Yeah, you. <laughs> but definitely. I'm not trying to make no sad music. I want to make fun music that I want to dance to because that's the that's yeah. the type of music that gets me through. Like I can't listen to. I love Adele. I love Frank Ocean. I love all that, but oh, yeah. I can't listen to them because it just makes me even more like in my feelings. And I sometimes just want to numb my feelings and not really think about it. So my music is a reflection of that. It's Dude, like, I relate to that so much because I, you know, I don't really like to, you know, show people that I'm like emotional and, and, and harp on it. And, yeah, and yeah. I, I, it's it's a it's something that I'm working on definitely that, um, you know, you've been through heartbreak. I've been through heartbreak, and uh, definitely it's uh, it's a struggle. But it's the it's worst amazing, thing ever. But yo. it's amazing how you could express yourself through music. Yeah. But you don't want to do you know the heartbreak vibe type stuff. Yeah, some maybe. Yeah, I don't. I don't um, know. I just feel like I can still get the message across. But let's dance it out. Let's just let's just let's just get high and get drunk and go have a good time and let's just like cry at the club is my thing. So you're more of like a like. You're a deep person. I'm so deep. What's your what, what's your what's your um what's your phrase in life? What what makes you what what what, what is Prince's phrase? Live life freely is one. Live life freely and fuck what anybody thinks. And fuck remember who you are. Okay. And I like that. Spread the peace. Retweet. Spread Say the peace. Again. Say that Spread again. Spread the peace. Let's go. And yeah. the cheeks. I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> So I've never went to a club with you. I've never went anywhere out with you at all. So Yo, we I don't should know. go tonight. I don't know. I know a spot. I don't know. I don't know how you are, but I feel like you get <laughs> down and crazy. I'm not. You know, I'm not really crazy. Like I honestly don't need to be like. I don't need to be lit to have a good time. I can go sober and have. You know what? Time. I yeah. That's the that's the thing about me is I I used to. Um, when I first moved to LA, I thought that you you know to have a good time you have to get lit and yeah, go no. out and like go crazy. But um, after being in LA for three years, yeah, I've like, bro, I don't like to even drink or barely smoke. But like, yeah. if it's the mo- if it's the vibe, it's the vibe. But like, it's it's about having good energy around me. Yeah, That'll yeah, make yeah. me decide. How long you been in LA? I'm b- born and raised here. You've been born and raised in LA. Yeah. Wow. So LA is, is just LA to me. It's not really anything crazy. Where are you from? I'm from Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah, I'm from the East Coast. East Coast, shout out East Coast, guys. East Coast is the best coast. I like the East Coast. It's cool. So yeah, that's amazing. So you're you're working on you know dropping this in the last next one month, two yeah. months. Um, yeah. Are you gonna be celebrating any t- any time? Like what? honestly, at this point, when I sign and I drop music, I'm probably gonna have like a single release party and i'm always i'm not against that but i'm the type of person uh-huh. that's like project you said what project oh hell yeah shout out to taz like yeah we, you know what have the single release party here i didn't even think about that yeah that would kind of be lit tell me a little bit about like where you see yourself in five years what do you want to what do you want to what do you want to accomplish in the next five years because for me personally, uh, every, growth is everything. You yeah. know, you you're 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 26. I'm 21, turning 22 this year, and all I'm focused on is my career and and growing and and bringing people up around me, yeah. and um and setting high expectations for myself so I could achieve these quote unquote impossible goals that everyone thinks that are yeah. unrealistic. And and so for the next five years, I want to really focus on. Um, building something really innovative that could change the world and I want to impact people because that's, that's why I do social media is just to impact people because I like I like seeing someone smile I like doing things for people let's go and I always said that's my purpose in life my, my, it, is to make people smile and that's why and that's why I wake up every day like excited I, I wake up every day excited to just live life to the fullest because at the end of the day, you don't even know if you're going to be here tomorrow. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, what you leave behind is what everyone will remember you by. And what I'm going to leave behind is, yeah. is how I treated people. And so, I feel like karma is everything. If you don't treat someone right, it's going to come back to them. So, at the end of the day, I treat everybody. I treat the janitor as I would treat the fucking president yeah. because no one's better. I don't think anybody is better than anyone else. I love that. And it doesn't matter if you got 500 K on Instagram. It doesn't matter if you got a thousand on Instagram, I'm going to treat you the same exact way because right. you're a fucking person. Yeah. And, uh, and it's too many people. We in this, need that in this world. Cause people are very, 
Hot headed. And let's talk about let's talk about like the music industry because you're in the wait, music. Wait, wait, in five years, wait, I want to answer that. In oh, five, yeah, five, five years, years, five years, sorry. I want my three goals is obviously to be somewhere a lot more successful in my career and any path that I choose. I want to I want to be in a stable relationship. I want to be in love. I want to be in love and in a really good relationship. You'll be 31 years old. I'll be 31. So hopefully, like, I don't know, maybe some some kids getting married or something. Oh, Yeah, I really want that. And three would be, if I'm being honest, I just just want my skin to look nice, my teeth to look white. Yeah, I was looking at your, I was looking at, uh, I think, one of your YouTube videos, and it was your skincare routine. And (laughs) I was about to look okay. (laughs) I don't look crazy (laughs) and happy. Actually, I just, I just want to be happy. Hold on. <laughs> Talk about all of my skin to look bad. I just want to be happy. Yeah, for I think everybody wants to be happy. But skin, but good skin, it makes me happy, though. I, I have a whole <laughs> skincare routine, too. I'm going to send you yeah. some stuff. Send me sure. some shit. Yo, I'm telling you, my skincare routine. Bruh. See, but I'm black, though. I got melanin. So uh, uh, my skincare routine, yeah. I got to do with other stuff. But you can definitely send some stuff. Yeah. I'm always open. So we're in two totally different industries obviously you yeah. know i'm in the influencer web three world you're in the music artist world yeah acting. what is web three i don't know none of that so um do you know what web three the overall concept of web three what is it no do you know <laughs> anything about nfts and crypto i've heard of it what's nft <laughs> and so, crypto <laughs> N- nft is a non-fungible token Okay. So non fungible token meaning if I if say I have an NF, you know it's a picture so that's what they represent it as right now so basically if I give you this picture you're gonna give me money ETH Ethereum like which is a crypto coin mm, and you can use that and, picture and I'm gonna give you this picture and once you buy it it's non fungible which means you can never get it back it's it's not refundable mm. so and so once you own it you own it if you spend a thousand dollars on it and then the price drops to two hundred dollars well you're out eight hundred dollars mm. so but you can also sell the picture for way more yeah than and you could also sell the if you bought it for five thousand dollars and then it goes up in value maybe like fucking ten thousand dollars you nice. can sell for you know way more money wow. than when you bought it for okay so there's a lot of money involved in crypto and nfts but that's not really what i'm focused on in the in in Web3, I'm really focused on the technology part. And yeah, like just how, tell me what you do, so like your favorite thing to do. My, my favorite thing to do is, is to focus on the tech, the tech side because like I'm, a, I'm like such a, like a gear, like tech gear guy. Dope. And what I've talked to many people in, in uh, the music industry on what they're doing with their artists. So I had, uh, I had a meeting with um, a manager of an artist and he was showing me what he was doing for his artists. So right. let me give you a rundown of what the fuck this shit was. What? So it, do you know what decentralization is? <laughs> no, I'm so, so <laughs> stupid right now. I'm such a old bubble. I'm like, but this is why we're doing this. Yeah. I need to so, learn this stuff. So decentralization is meaning that you own everything you own, the property. So if I, so if like, say, um, like an app on your phone is mm. decentralized, it's not tracked. You, you're like, you know how Google and Instagram tracks um, like your watch time, what you like the most, mm-hmm. like all of that, that's centralized. They're controlling what you see. Okay. Decentralized is you're controlling what you see. You're controlling what's going on. You're ha- you have your own data. So basically they, uh, he showed me this app where his artists, um, every single one of his fans can create his own NFT, like their own separate NFT for them. So basically, um, you connect your wallet, um, you know, it's trust wallet, um, MetaMask, Mm -hmm. you connect your wallet to the website. And then from the website, it goes into, you know, the back end of the website, it opens up the homepage. And you could basically buy this NFT buy mint it um, for something cheap, like fucking I think it was like 15 $20. And it creates your fan a record that plays one of your songs and there's three themes to the every record the record is a different color the text on the screen is a different font and then the background is different and then it all changes so it becomes a one of one for every single fan of yours and they could own it and nobody else could own the same exact record and so they could go into they could take that and then put it on OpenSea. you know what OpenSea is yeah yeah, so they could go and take that, put it on OpenSea, and then sell it 
and one of one. And then they, your fans decide what the value of your NFT collection is. Wow. So it's giving, so basically you're taking, you know, how you have to go through Spotify and yeah. like all these third party web two companies. Mm -hmm. So now in web three, what artists are trying to do is just go direct consumer to the fans and how they, how are they doing that is by creating these decentralized, um, decentralized websites where their fans can go on their site and now create something of their own that Spotify could never create. And Spotify gives the platform of like, you know, the exposure and all of that, but people are creating web three, like Spotify versions where it's like, you're not going through a third party and you're not going through all those fucking hassles and shit. So that's what artists are doing in the music industry, um, involving um, their fans with NFTs. So the funny thing is that like, you have someone like Chris Brown who dropped an NFT collection and sold 7% of his entire collection. He's not really respected in the Web3 space because it was basically a money grab. Like a lot of artists are doing money grab NFT Did he make a lot of money from it? No, I don't think he did. He only sold 7% of the collection. It didn't even sell out. So okay. like he all, he, he like messed it all up and everything. But yeah, like definitely for you, getting into NFTs and crypto would be an advantage because now you could take your fans to another level. Like you're, you and yourself, like you could go to another level with your music career. Yeah. Because decentralization in Web3 is all about taking ownership within you and stop going to, you know, everybody else. Like, like um, how decentralized bank, like decentralized banks, they're not tracking your money. They're not in control of your money. You don't have so like, in your wallet, your wallet address, you can have $50,000 in there and you could transfer it to wherever you want. I could transfer you $25,000 and I don't need to go through my bank to do that. I don't need to, mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to go to the bank and say, hey, can I do this? Yes or no. And they're not, they're not gonna call me, I think your account's frauded or whatever. No, it's literally, here's 25K. And it's untraceable if it's um, through a decentralized system. So like Trust sure. Wallet, MetaMask mm -hmm. is decentralized. KuCoin is an exchange that's... Um, oh, he knows. Yeah. He knows what's up. I have, know you made, have you made an NFT? I haven't made an NFT. What I'm focused on right now is the project NFTs, the membership NFTs. Okay. Uh, that's what we're, we're doing right now. So I'm not... I, I, I hate when influencers and artists and like Web3 um, individuals promote projects just for money. Because I've had right. many opportunities to create... Uh, not create, but promote an NFT collection, get a bag, and then walk away, which I don't want. I'm not focused on that because I, love that. I want my reputation in Web3 to be credible. And I haven't even told my fans anything about Web3 at all. I haven't even promoted on TikTok. How do you think yeah. your life is going to transition after this album and then where you're going to where you're going to go? What are you going to focus on? Honestly, I, I truly believe that everything is going to fall into place once I put the music out. There's so many opportunities that that's getting presented to me, but it's not the right time. So I just want to solidify myself as a solo artist. And, and you said you have a good artist coming up on one of your songs. Yes, we can't mention it though. We can't mention it. We can't mention it. Oh. But shh. we can't mention it. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's just I'm really excited. I'm a little nervous, but I'm ready. I'm I'm and I'm just ready to like fucking hit people beside the head. Honestly, boss up, boss yeah. the fuck up. It's right. It's time to boss the fuck up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's what we want to see. How is the music industry? Like, how do they, like, are you, you're signed, you're not signed to a record. I'm not, but I'm about to be. Signed. You're about to be. So tell me how, you know, like what, what those side of things, maybe I can learn something off of you. What's something that most majority yeah. of people don't know about the music industry that isn't really like, you know, out in the public and out in the world. Like, you know, how I'm talking about Web3. It's not, it's not being uh, casted to right. fucking news and like everything it has to be like i you have to be inside the industry to even know i mean the biggest thing i would say is you probably being a music artist you really don't make a lot of money oh really it's like 98 percent hard work and dedication to your craft and like two percent you make money and you artists really make money off of touring or brand deals or if they have rights on a song. But for the most part, just putting music out, if you have a demo that a famous producer gives you and you record it and you put it out and it's a hit, you're not seeing that much bag to it. So that's why you see a lot of artists um, are touring 
a touring act, you know. So that's one of them. And another thing is, you know, this new era that we live in, a lot of p- artists that are huge are independent. I think Russ. because of social media, I think people know that they can do it on their own and they don't really need a machine. A machine does help. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes when you are so hold in on what you want and what your art to be, which is so respected, you you may, you know, work a little harder and sacrifice a little more just to get your vision out. So what's the biggest thing that you've sacrificed in your life for your music career? Oh, my whole childhood. Your whole childhood? Yeah, I didn't have a Do childhood. You, really? Yeah, I didn't go to school. I didn't have friends. I didn't go to prom. I didn't, well, I did go to prom, but it was like homeschool prom. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have that experience. So I just sometimes feel like I'm 26 now, but there's a lot of things that I'm going through now that everyone goes through at you, your age yeah. or or even 15, like getting your heart broken yeah. or falling in love or going on dates and, you know, all this stuff that's really so high you're school. Now, you're now experiencing all of that because your childhood was pushed back Yeah, so and long. I think that's what's helping me in my life because I think as a young artist, when you do so much and it's successful, you think that you kind of have life figured out. You're like, perfect, I have money, I have success, right. I have respect, I have a name for myself, like I did it. Like I conquered life at at the age of 19. Yeah. Like I've done more than, because at, at the time, you know, you're doing more than what your family's done. Mm-hmm. You've, you've yep. seen the world more than them. You make more money than them. You, you are meeting more people than them. You're getting more experiences. Like, you know, so you, in your mind, you think you've experienced life and it isn't until yep. real life hits you. Yep. And then you go, oh shit. Shit, I ain't shit. I'm not really shit. And then you, and then you appreciate everything your parents and your grandparents and family say because that's the life that they know and now and so now my life is just kind of like going through this phase where like i'm experiencing a lot of things that i probably should have experienced as a young kid but you know what it's cool and you know whoever's with me is with me whoever is not it's not and that's how that's how that's how i think too um yeah. I, I definitely had to grow up fast when i was 17 like that's when i decided to kick off my career and like no, just okay. that i just realized one day like i'm worth way more than this of like what my environment is and and who like who i'm around because like i had this drive this work ethic that i wanted way more in my life my dreams were unrealistic to people they were saying that i'm dumb i'm stupid for like even thinking that i want to just be this like person in the in the industry like i wanted to be this like big person that impacts the world and and i come from a small town so it's there's nobody that's actually pushing to go out in the world i didn't i didn't see the world until like 17 i my family went family and i went on one trip my entire life florida orlando <laughs> like i i only saw the world one time with my my family florida. All, my, <laughs> and so like i like i i understand like my childhood was different from yours but i definitely had to learn how to grow up fast because yeah. i made a i made a like i made a grown decision at a young age to yeah. move across the country and like literally when i came here i had like 600 dollars in my pocket i didn't know anybody wow. and i lived out of a suitcase for a year trying to like make shit work and, and you did it and i did it i did and you're it still doing it and I, i'm still pushing i'm still sh- uh, sh- trying to strive and now it's, it's it's three years later and I'm, and I'm like i'm grateful you know i'm a, i appreciate everyone that's helped me and supported me and i want to i want to give back i want to give back because i'm not saying i'm not i did this shit by myself i had mm-hmm. help and a lot of people fail to realize that you need help you need help to get through this industry well, that's that's the biggest thing that i've had to learn in life is, is needing help doesn't mean you're weak needing help doesn't mean that um you're vulnerable needing help just means you need help and i'm so independent i get that from my that, mom no, that, that's I'm i get so that from my mom too. i'm too star i'm my, a tourist i'm stubborn my, i'd rather do it on my own exactly. i'd rather fail on my own facts my because my mom is uh she she raised my 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 uh siblings and i um, all by herself growing up because my dad was around but he wasn't living with us he, he, he like like he was like you know he was around and everything but my mom was the one that was the rock for us and she held it down and she went through a lot in her life yeah. and so she taught me how to be independent and work for what you want and try and let's fucking go and make the impossible happen and so like yeah. my mom supporting me through this whole journey has just been like amazing because my mom is my most important person me and too and shout my, out to mom shout out shout out to shout out to our moms for real because yes. without without my mom trying supporting me 
Like I don't know where the fuck I'd be. Let's like go I don't know to where this the fuck day. I'd, to this day, because I I still call my mom on the phone every fucking day. I'm 26 and I still do that. Like, I'm like, I, mama, I'll probably be 26, 30 years old, tr- calling my mom, like telling her what's up. I love my mom. It, like our relationship is is just like open. Like I I say anything and Same. we're just like <laughs> Same, my mama know. <laughs> like, and but like I feel Not like I feel like I feel like uh you know having a you know a supportive mom and like family um mm-hmm. growing up definitely helped both of us grow um into more a mature person and want to achieve more in life on our in a, on an early age um because we had that person saying you got this yeah. you know you 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 can fucking do it like i'm supporting you 100 percent. like no matter if you fail a thousand times like i'm still behind you and that's that's been like my biggest thing is that like i i chase after failure i don't let it chase me and that's my quote that's my favorite quote of all time i need to because (laughs) because i don't i don't like i don't like uh i don't like when people make excuses and say that oh shit's too hard oh i got this going on in my life oh like you know this and that like nah bro i know so many people that had every single odd against them their family death everything against them and they still they showed still up. showed up every fucking day and made shit happen and that's that's there's a difference of like do you really want it or are you just are you just talking through your mouth because action speaks louder than words let's go what the fuck and I and that's 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 what I that's what I really stand for and so like definitely I relate to you on a lot of things on like where you want to go in life you're 26 like you're four four or five four or five years older than me and your your story is very interesting Thanks. you know you got in the industry very young like yeah. hella young i didn't get into this industry until i was 17 years old right. or 16 i was a baby yo so you were like hella hella young and and so i respect you for you know keeping keeping your shit together and still going because i bet i bet you've been Thanks through like so many downfalls yeah just all the just just all the women in my life have definitely kept me sane like that's the only way that i'm <sighs> that i'm here yeah and god and the universe and just leaving it sometimes the biggest thing i've learned is like sometimes you just do not know the answer and sometimes you will not know what to do and nobody's gonna it's not gonna take for someone who's experienced it to tell you it's not gonna be a book it's not gonna be an interview Sometimes it's not even going to be yourself. Sometimes you just have to literally sit to yourself and say, you know what? I'm confused right now with what's going on. And I'm just going to leave it to the universe and just pray that it works in my favor. And I'm a good person. And let's just keep moving forward. I can't let it distract me. Easier said than done. It, it is easier said than done. I'm saying it. I'm like, I can't even take that. For yeah. Advice. Yeah. I believe, I believe in energy though. Yeah. And I, and what I believe in is, um, if I stay focused and I work hard and I, and I keep putting positive energy in the world, then I'm going to attract that same energy. Cause for me, I'm very spontaneous and I take, I take a lot of opportunities, even if they sound like crazy, I take the opportunity cause I don't know. I like, I like the thrill of not knowing what the fuck is about to happen. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, Good luck with that. so I, don't. <laughs> I, I love, I love, I love just putting myself in situations that I don't know what's going to happen because every single time that I trust my intuition, something good comes out of it every single time. And there's been so, so many situations in my life where every single person is against me. And the only person that's, that's with me is my intuition. Like, oh, and, shit. and, and so Fuck. I've taken that road of going towards the wrong end toward, on everybody else's perspective, my, my entire life. And that's who I, I don't know where, I don't know where I, I wish get, I was like that. I don't know where I get that from. I just get, don't I, question it. my mom, my dad, like no one in my family is like that. I'm, I'm like such a daredevil that I just don't give a fuck. And I'm. And I know, like, I'm only 21. Like, you're fearless. I got a whole life ahead of me. So why the fuck am I scared right now? There's nothing to be. F- that I'm fearless because at the end of the day, wow. I know where I'm gonna go. Like, you should know where you're gonna go. Like, you wanna, wow. you know, do this music career. You wanna be successful, we right. even more successful. Yeah. But if you know, if you someone knows where you're going in life, like where, like where you're going to end up, then why the fuck are you scared right now? have some conf- have confidence and walk through that door every single day 
because if it's unknown, that's okay because you know on the end right there, it's it's there's your Something. goal. It's Something. right there. It's bright. It's it's fucking beautiful. That's how I think. Is that's my perspective. And so anything that happens in my life, and even if it's uncontrollable, I'm just like, you know what? My life is my life is a blessing right now. Even to be here, I've made the unrealistic happen. So the things that people complain about on a daily basis is irrelevant because at the end of the day no one cares you're gonna die and no one will give a fuck about how you felt during your life when when it was when it when it comes to stuff that's like stupid if it was like something uncontrollable you know like shit went down then like people will be there but like i'm talking about like situations that are just like so dumb that a lot of you will make a situation out of, and I'm like, bro, why are you overreacting? It's like all in your head. You're just thinking it, but it's not real. And that's where the emotions get tied in. And then you're like, fuck. Then that's where your actions come in. And now you start to feel like it's real. And that's when you believe it's real. Holy fucking shit. That's what I'm going through right now. So how do you stop that? So basically how you get over that is realizing your emotions. You have to be, you have to be aware of your emotions, how to control your emotions. Because for me, I'm very tapped in to my emotions. I understand my brain. I read a lot of psychology books. So being educated is fucking number one, first of all. Because if you don't know how your body works, how your emotions work, how are you even understanding yourself? You just, you're, you're just on a roller coaster of emotions that you don't even know how to control because you don't understand what is actually going on. What is a trigger? What, is, what, it, what, what really triggers you? And then that trigger, you're, you're in a delusional state of a roller coaster. Your emotions are everywhere. So it's just delusional. You don't have time to even think and sit back. So taking control of that is definitely definitely wanting to know yourself and who you are more of understanding you take everybody out of the picture fuck everybody else focus on you and your emotions not even your emotions towards anybody else understanding yourself in your in yourself and so like how i've like the last three years, that's a big thing that I've been focused on because I used to, I used to have a lot of triggers that, you know, like people, people would just say like disrespect is one of my biggest triggers. If you disrespect me, then like it, it triggers in my brain and I, ha I just like go off. And so my biggest trigger is people who think they know you better than you know yourself and they treat you like exactly. You're this young person that you don't really know yourself. I know who you are. And you, in a way, to stop conflict, to stop drama, you start to believe it. And then you forget who you really are. Exactly. And, and, and so, then when you remember who you are and you stand up, they think you changed. They think you're being mean. Facts. But Ooh. do you feel like you have a lot of people around you like that? Or, I, or a handful? I have about probably maybe three three people well, for and one me, of them is the closest person to me so that's hard well for me i i don't have anyone like that in my life because i've already eliminated every single person that did that Whew, yeah and it, it might be hard and so you have to first realize where is it coming from and it could be a person it could be yourself but wherever it's coming from you eliminate it even though how hard it could be because your mental health is everything you know, yeah. and your career is everything. So you can't lose yourself in emotions that, first of all, people are getting in your head about. It's like, bruh. Or getting caught up in emotions that you make up on your own. Those yeah, are the worst. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I, I used to do that a lot. I used to, like, make up, like, overthink like crazy. Um, sometimes I do overthink, um, but I know how to be like, wait, hold the fuck up. Like, this is not even real. Literally, there'll be sometimes I'm, like, driving in my car, and I'm, and I'm like, overthinking, like, this whole situation. And then, uh, and then like, I'm, like, s my brain is so invested in the story, and I'm, like, holy shit, like, what is this, this, and then it goes down this whole loophole, and then, but then what I, literally what I do is I'm, like, I, like, l bounce out of, like, I don't know how the fuck I do it, but I, like, f 
somehow realize that's going on. It's like awareness is like the number one thing to get you yourself out of the emotion is being aware that your brain is doing it. And so when you become aware, you bounce back and you're like, holy shit. And then like, I literally shake my head and I'm like, what the fuck? This is not real. Like, shut up. Like I literally have arguments in my head and I'm like, Wait. It's I'm like, the what worst. the fuck? I read this book called The Master Yourself and they talk about that parasite in your brain. Yeah. And when that parasite starts to your like, sub, ha, you gotta kick it out. Your up. subconscious is the most negative thing in, in every single person. Your subconscious wants to take control of every single, it wants to make you aware of every single negative thing in your mind and what's going on in your life. Because you don't look in the mirror every day and say, damn, and say all these positive things. Damn, I'm fucking, I'm the shit. Like, high five. Like, you don't do that shit. Mo majority of people are like, damn, I need to like, damn, I'm going through this. Like, or it's, it's negative. Like, you're just looking at yourself and you're like, damn, fucking, like, I'm going through this and that. Like, I need to fix this. Like, that and that. But like, what if you change that perspective and you, and you looked in the mirror and you're like, Bro, today's a fucking, like, today's a great day. Even if you're going through anything, you're looking at yourself and saying, this is me and you at the end of the day. This is, this is, this is who, this is me. And so, like, what I, literally what I did to try and connect with myself more, look at myself in the mirror, high, this may sound weird, high five yourself <laughs> in the mirror and you're, you're literally going, your, your mental, your subconscious is going to feel like as a, another person and it's going to trick your mind how you trick your mind with all these negative connotations in your brain you're going to trick your mind positively and it's you're going to feel like oh shit because when you give your someone a high five it's positive it's not ne it's never negative why are you giving someone a high five positive so give yourself a high five in the mirror and then literally like i did it for three three four days and then i every time i looked at myself in the mirror I remember, you remember that high five of like, damn, you got shit done. Like, you're the shit. And, and, uh, and so that's, that's, uh, that's another way of kind of, <laughs> that's another way of wow, like, wow, this podcast really has me thinking some shit. Yeah, man. I think the last thing I want to say is thank you for even asking me to be on this podcast. And two, of course, bro. I would say, we're just like, everybody's exactly where we're supposed to be and just breathe that's just breathe saying. just breathe just breathe that's your ending when message. you breathe that's like you you reminding your body that you're human yeah and it's okay and that's the one thing that everybody in this world has it's like yeah. a breath like we are just breathing well, man, it was great. It was great having you on this podcast. Definitely um, would love to see where you go and educate yourself in Web3. And, dude, I want to see this fucking song pop the shit off. Yes. Positive eyes. Positive, positive eyes. eyes. Make sure you uh, give yourself a dab. Yes, morning. sir. The link is all in the bios. Check them out, bro. It's been real. It's been great. Prince, Mango, and we out. Peace.